Barring any last-minute change, the three major parties, All Progressives Congress, People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party for the 2024 governorship election in Edo State, would by February 23rd conclude their primaries. The governorship ticket for the People's Democratic Party in Edo State is already looking like it will be a highly contested one as we've witnessed friction within the party between the Governor Godwin Obaseki and his deputy, Philip Shaibu who is also a governorship aspirant for the forthcoming elections. However, PDP stakeholders in Edo State seem to be tilting towards the choice of Dr. Asue Godalo, who has officially declared his interest in contesting for the governorship of Edo State under the party, as their point is that he may be the preferred candidate of Governor Obaseki. Right. So joining us now on the morning show to discuss inter-party inter -party politics in Edo State, as the party primaries approaches, Anthony uh, Hilebo, a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State. Good to see you again, Anthony. Uh, Anthony, what's happening in Edo as we speak? Uh, we had a big declaration yesterday by Aswe Godalo. He's officially coming to the race. But a lot of other candidates are there. Can you just give us a breakdown of the other aspirants? And also, talk to us about the Shoaibu factor. Because the things they say against Asu is this, is, 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 is high up there. It's not of that grassroots level. Shraib says, I am a big grassroots politician. He has the benefit of being deputy governor as we speak. Can you break it down for us? Well, good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Vimbai. It's nice to be here again. And, um, it's actually nice to be here on a very good note. And when you're speaking for someone that you're very proud of, uh, you want to speak for uh, competence, you want to speak for capacity, you want to speak for uh, human compassion. Uh, these are the embodiments of Dr. Aswe Gudalo, uh, as I've come to know him uh, in the last couple of months. Um, yes, he's fairly new to the scene of politics, but not new to the Edo scene. Uh, as um, a few of the people you've mentioned uh, have tried to portray, but you know, when you cannot do anything but throw stones, uh, <laughs> you, you, you tend to go that way. And, it, and it's very clear to the Edo people who will eventually make this choice. Uh, but at the first instance, we are at the party primaries level. And um, I can tell you that uh, Edo State is about to witness a new era um, with the advent of. Um, the, the kind of players we have today on, on the scene. Um, I'm particularly going to speak maybe about the PDP because you've asked about uh, what's been happening at the scene. You've had uh, a very interesting build up in the last couple of months. Um, I, well, I'm from Edo Central just for, just to state, uh, which, which comprises of the states mostly known as uh, uh, the Ishan side of town. Uh, and, and, you know, there's been a very interesting build up to them uh, presenting. Uh, one single candidate, which happened yesterday, or aspirant, uh, which happened yesterday. I've, I've been, you know, privileged to be sit in the room sometimes during the committee meeting. They've been very thorough uh, under the leadership of uh, Chief Tom Kimi, who guided the process without fear or favor, and, and knowing that Igwebe had no of all the five local governments in Edo Central, Igwebe did not have anybody aspiring. But you had very strong uh, aspirants. You had a the likes of uh, Senator Clifford Odia, who's a two-time senator uh, from uh, Esan West, uh, Esan Central, as he's from Irua. And then you had the former speaker, uh, Marcos Onobu, who is now in the House of Representatives. Uh, these were very, very strong. We had Friday Tula, a uh, former speaker and a former House of Rep member. Um, all these were aspirants from the Central under the PDP uh, banner. And they have seriously been campaigning. You had John Yakubu, a former local government chairman. Um, and, they, and through the process of um, consultations uh, within the central, particularly, um, we had uh, interesting events where you had this very strong aspirant stepping down and indicating support for uh, uh, Dr. Aswe Godalo. I mean, it was really phenomenal, but it didn't come um, at the cost of doing nothing. This was true, uh, the intervention of the leaders, the elders of the party, um, consultations, um, you know, serious politicking that went on to the dead of the night. Uh, um, you know, as a new entrant into the game or someone who was considered an, a political outsider, but also a stakeholder in the Edo project, 
Uh, people didn't expect uh, Dr. Godalo to make so much progress uh, in trying to even unite the party. Of course, we've had some issues, um, and, and this is clear to everybody within Edo PDP, particularly um, with, well, the integration between the governor and um, the, those known as legacy PDP didn't quite go as well. But within the short period that uh, Dr. Aswan had has intervened in the party, he has, he has become what is now known as a unifier. Um, for the first time in, in, in two and a half years, he got the State Working Committee to sit together to receive him and hear his plans for Edo State. I, I think particularly that, that thrilled most of us that are um, PDP faithful in, Ed, in right. Edo State. Okay. That we had someone who now was able to break the ice. All right, Mr. Anthony. Well, that's good. So, uh, Dr. Aswe Godalo is the icebreaker. Well, let me ask you um, with regards to where does Mr. Philip Shaibu come into play in all of this? Because he is still a member of the PDP. He has hinted, I mean, in very clear terms, that he would also be throwing his hat in the ring. And um, yes, I understand that a number of the other aspirants had stepped down for Dr. Aswe Godalu. It looks like I mean, a number of PDP, PDP chieftains are backing him. But there's still the uh, Philip Shaibu uh, factor. Is Dr. Ase Godalo looking to break that ice with him as well? Well, incidentally, I, I, I've been at three, four occasions where Dr. Ase Godalo has met um, the, our current deputy governor, which we hold in very high esteem, by the way. Um, uh, one an instance was, I think, at a meeting somewhere in Benin, and the next time was in Ogbona, when uh, Dr. Ase graced uh, the PDP South South Vice Chairman's uh, annual event in Ogbona, his hometown. Um, I, I think the, the, there are even pictures where he was hugging him. Um, they were very chummy. I, I think that uh, this is a family political contestation. And uh, as we believe in, our, uh, uh, amongst those of us that sort of listen to and follow uh, Dr. Aswe Godalo, um, we, we believe in uh, an open uh, and continuous uh, seeking of partnership. We want to unite the party. He wants to contest. He's free to, he's free to throw his heart into the ring. I mean, uh, we're very happy to, to go to an election with him. And if he wins, we will support him. We've said that before. But uh, we all know that the acceptability uh, Dr. Aswan is getting today is not just because uh, he's coming and you know, indicators that he's being supported by one person. Or I mean, this is a man that has built everything he has had in the last 40 years on his own. So how do you think it will be a challenge for him to build uh, political relationships, with the experience he's coming with, with the capacity he's coming with, the humility he brings to the table. He talks to everybody, uh, and he's very, very accessible at the grassroots. I mean, he's a man that walks on his street. I've actually been there. He walk on his street like he, he felt like exercising, and the whole community came out and started walking behind him. Because this is a man that quietly, oh, since 2000, he started writing letters to uh, uh, Bola, uh, late Bola Egi when he was Minister of Power, to say, my people in Ewohimi do not have power. And for him to give light to Ewohimi, four communities, including a community in Igwebe, where I'm from, Ekmo, have benefited from getting this power. This is a sole individual, not a government. Imagine when he has public capacities as an executive, mm. what he can deliver to the people of Edo State. Absolutely. And imagine in his private practice, Yes. how successful he's been and how he's been able to navigate this. This is the experience uh -huh. and capacity we know he is capable of, and that's what everybody says with him. That's right. Now, let's take a look at the intricacies of the lead up to this prim primary. Uh, because when we look at the onset of this race, there was a big focus on shifting away from godfatherism. Uh, but now, in all intents and purposes, it's starting to look as though there is an anointed candidate, a consensus candidate. Where is the PDP going with regards to ensuring that uh, the ticket is contested fairly and, uh, in, and committing to uh, the agenda against godfatherism that uh, the PDP had uh, committed themselves to at the onset of this race? Now, when you look at the profile of uh, Dr. Aswe Gudala, I think it's, it's actually um, very... Um, unfair to him in a way to say anybody can be his godfather at this point in time. Um, I have seen a man who I never knew call me as little as I am um, about four months ago and say to me, 
uh, I, I, my name is Dr. Aswe Godala. I want to, I want you to work for me. I'm, I'm interested in doing something I do. And after a 30 minute conversation, he tells me he'll come. He comes to my office, sits for four hours to tell me about his plans. When that sort of person is in the field, there's nobody that's Godfather in him. He, his soldiers on on his own. I have seen him within four months do things that have taken politicians 20 years to do. And because he comes with that competence and understanding of human nature, he finds it very easy. To, every action, everything that has happened within the period of this contestation has no bearing on Godfather. I've never been uh, at any function or heard anywhere where anybody is saying he's sponsoring Dr. He makes the effort to make friends. He makes the, there is no political leader in a do state today, whether on every side of the divide, within PDP and even outside PDP, including the religious leaders that Dr. Axel has not reached out to, gone to visit, knocked on their doors. I mean, this man literally works 18 hours. You know, he said it sometime that I work 18 hours. I didn't believe it. But this man goes to bed at 4 a.m. just on his last visit, knocks on your door at 1 a.m. There's some write-up someone who did that. He was shocked that while other politicians are busy characterizing their campaigns, uh, on ethnic or whether he's resident or, you know, some sort of things that you begin to wonder whether the, the things that really matter don't concern these people anymore. Uh, but there again, that's what they're doing. But we're quite focused on what we need to do for Edo State. Should he get become governor? This is a man that has gone to visit a, a, a Bender Flower, which is a now prime. Uh, talk to the management and now come back to his team and say, look, I want to see how maybe we can backward integration and create a value chain that brings some sort of uh, respite, lifting uh, the people out of poverty, um, making sure that if people have money in their pockets, they have value for the kind of jobs they can do. Um, he's thinking about the integration, the security he can provide for, for Edo State. You know, Edo State already has um, it's the greatest state in Nigeria, like he says. Um, it, it, it has so much potential, and it has had a crop of leaders over the last couple of years. Uh, going back to uh, Florence Ali, uh, one of the greatest, Ambrose Ali, one of the people described as one of the greatest governors. Nigeria, in fact, Africa has had, because he, he did so well in such a short time. Uh, and this, this speaks to the nature of the, of the average Edo man who outperforms himself. We're talking about people like uh, Rima uh, in the creative industry. How, how many people know that this guy is from Edo State, Charlie Poppy? You have uh, the, in, in football, the current top footballer in, in, in Italian league, Osima, is from Edo State. So we have a lot to be proud of in, in, in our state. And, and that's what we seek uh, as a people to, to sell to the world with the, with the plans we have for tourism, creating a tourism belt within Edo State, the plans we have for the inter, interstate rail, connecting to the, to the, the, rail tra the national rail that passes through our state, that stops from Aganebode, goes all the way to, to Ekeke, Igwebe, where I'm from, and all the way to Igbanke. We know that this rail exists, so we want to connect state rails to, to move good services. And, and, and of course, um, raw materials and, and human humans across the state to they just imagine to being able to take a train from the Otara of Auchi, Auchi's day and go all the way to Benin. And it's a trip that you land at Benin Airport. The tourist potential of Edo State is so great. Um, these are the things that um, Dr. Aswell sees. And he sees a pathway. This is a man that has worked in corporate financing at the highest level. In fact, um, two days ago, he just he walked into me and said, you know, my law firm just closed one of the biggest acquisitions ever in the history of Nigeria. That is the sort of person that okay. is bringing, and that's the sort of experience okay. he's bringing to Edo State, I okay. speak. Okay, I mean, very, very good one, Anthony. But a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Hatsue Gudalu, yes, is a great achiever. But he's having his first stab at politics at the age of 64. If he's to do two terms, at the end of his second term, he's going to be well into his 70s. Probably he's going to be one of the oldest governors in the country as we speak today. What's your take on that, number one? Number two, he has achieved a lot. He's known far and wide, yes. He has done a lot in the corporate sector. But the grassroots politicking is something entirely different. That goes with a lot of nuances. So take, for instance, there was a video that went viral about him getting an interpreter 
to be able to enunciate his message to his people. A lot of people see him as an outsider. Governor Shribu was on this seat where Vimba is sitting, and he kept on mentioning an outsider. They are coming from outside to come and take the state from us. And not only Governor Shribu has that opinion, a lot of other people say, yeah, we like this rise of the technocrats, but we want that level of, you know, we want people that are on ground. Those are some of the concerns they have raised. What do you say to these concerns, Anthony? Hi, Rufai, uh, once again. <laughs> well, if you, if you look at the people that, um, he's 63. Um, uh, if you look at the people around Dr. Aswe Kodalo, and over the years, he's surrounded himself with young energy. But I tell you something, and, and this is an open confession. Dr. Aswe Kodalo will leave you panting every time you move around. I don't know where he gets the energy, but he will leave you panting. So when it comes to um, the age, and he always says to us, you know why I have so many young people is to even out the age around me. He does that intentionally. It's very intentional about having very smart young people around him. So that, and he says to you, if I include other people, older people, and they said, um, it means that the age average around me will be so high. And I like to even that out. And I take advice from the elderly. I take advice from very young people. So he's able to mix. You know, the problem people have with people who are above a certain age is the uh, inoperability, um, the, the ability to adapt and understand that times have changed and we're in a new era. You know, it's interesting that his, um, his uh, abbreviation of his name is AI. Uh, and if you look at the world today, the world is in an era of AI. So it's, it's very uh, ominous, uh, his arrival on the scene. And, and then I'll pivot back to the question you asked about uh, being, <laughs> you know this word they use, homeboy and, and whatnot. I mean, how do you describe someone a real homeboy is someone who does things for his people and, and does not make noise about it. It's, if there's a, the, the biggest lesson I've learned being around Dr. Aswe is how to be humble. In fact, at the, when we have meetings and we talk, one of the most important um, things he says before he leaves the room is, guys, you must learn to be humble. You must learn humility. Um, if we've had anything to learn from him, his humility in delivery. Um, he does so much for his community. He does so much for people around him. He's done so much in Edo State, right? And he's not made noise about it. In fact, this is the time we're trying to get him to start talking about the things he's done, about the light he's brought, the, the, the primary schools he's sustained, the relationship he's built. In Edo State today, uh, I, on, whether you like it or not, Dr. Aswa is one of the politicians that has reached out even across the divide to other people. Uh, he's not, he's not, this is not a party affair for him. This is a state affair. This, this is about a do state. It's not just about uh, he himself. It's not. Uh, and so when um, you see a congregation of people who have... Anthony, can you yes, hear me? Yes, go ahead. I can hear you, Rufai. The challenge I want to throw to you yes, is... Yes, I can. When are you going to bring Dr. Aswe Igodalo to this seat on Arise to talk to us? Because another problem is he's been media shy... We want to feel him and talk to him and have those conversations, not surrogates. When is he going to come here? Rufa, is this Rufa, you can tell uh, Rufa, him? Rufa, when are we going to um, come here? Doc, when is he going to come to arise? Yes, talk to us after his declaration. Uh, Rufa, you, you know, you know, you are you are you are going for the hot cake while it's while it's just fresh from the from the oven. Doctor Swen just declared yesterday. And yesterday evening, unfortunately, he declared after your show, which is after 12 o'clock, uh, Arise, Arise is a medium that we want to uh, come on. He's very eager to come on. He's, in fact, we were the one tell, we had to tell him, just slow down, do your declaration, because he had to do consultations. It's not because uh, he didn't want to speak to the media or he's media shy. Dr. Aswan has a methodology for doing things. He believes, in fact, in, in declaring, he had to start at his family level. He had a meeting with his family. He had a meeting with his Egbe. He had a meeting with his local government. He had a meeting with his senatorial district. We went to the north to consult. We came back to Edo South, consulted. We consulted with the state working committee before he made his declaration. He's, 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 he's calculated. He understands what he needs to do. So Arise okay. is, he should have been on Arise this morning. But I assure you that uh, the next prime time you have, uh, Dr. Aswan will be ready to answer any okay. question. 
I mean, we are awed when he speaks. He, he okay. knows. He knows. He speaks from the heart. He speaks okay. about what he wants to thank, do. So, thank you so before, much. is that assurance enough for you? And you know, I'm a man of my word. Thank you so uh, much. I'll keep that. my word, and, that, and and that's why I follow someone who keeps his word as well. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you for that. Thank you so much for your time, and we're looking forward it, to that interview.